Hey everyone, welcome to the next round of the Try a Chapter Holiday Edition. So in this vlog, I'm going to be doing a Try a Chapter of at least five other holiday related books. I may do a little bit more, it depends. I did receive more holiday related books in bookish subscription services and they weren't originally on the plan to include them in the vlogs, but I may go ahead and do it anyway since I have so many. But I have gone ahead and read the first chapter in the next book and that is A Very Merry Bromance by Lissa K. Adams. I actually read the prologue and then the first chapter. In total, it was about 14 pages. So this is the fifth book in her Bromance Book Club series. If you're not familiar, that is a series that follows men who all meet together to read romance books and discuss them. And they do this in an effort to kind of better understand what women want, what women like, how to be better lovers, better friends, just better men in general. And like I said, this is the fifth book. I've only ever read the first book. I haven't read the ones in between. You can definitely read them all as standalones, but it is obvious that if you start with this book, you are definitely going to be missing something because the characters from the other books are mentioned. And then of course, course like their wives or their partners whom they would meet in the other books like so you're definitely missing a lot of context there but if that doesn't really bother you especially since it's not going to be necessary to understand this story then I don't see that you would have any problem with reading this. So this follows our main character Colton Wheeler and he is like a country singer superstar and in the very prologue of this book you see him waking up from a one night stand. He was a groomsman in the wedding of one of his fellow bromance book club members and he ended up taking one of the wedding guests to bed and the wedding guest was actually like the ex of the groom I guess they dated briefly and Colton was just very attracted to her there was just something about her and so Colton took her to bed but Colton actually seems to be a lot more interested in her her name is Gretchen than Gretchen is in him he wakes up super happy he thinks that this could be the start of something but Gretchen is just kind of very much in a hurry she wants to get out of there she doesn't really have any interest in furthering things with Colton as a country superstar you know he's used to girls fawning all over him and he really thought that he saw something different in Gretchen but she's just kind of out and then you get into the first chapter, which doesn't really further the plot at all. You're just following Colton and several members of the Bromance Book Club as they're going to like this exercise class. And that's really it. So it's just kind of introducing the story and introducing more about the characters that you're going to be following. I believe chapter two is from Gretchen's perspective. So I haven't yet gotten anything from her directly. So at this point, we're still very new into the book. We don't really have a solid idea of where it is going or what's going to happen. I did really enjoy the first 14 pages that I read. This is something that I would easily be able to continue with and it's something I I definitely have an interest in continuing with in the future. If I were going to rank it among the other five books that I've read, so six total now, I would probably place it number two just because I seem to automatically have an interest in this relationship. I really want to see what happens when Colton and Gretchen reconnect, especially since Colton was so interested in her and she didn't seem really interested in him. So I kind of want to see how they reconnect and maybe spark up some romance and things like that. So I would put this as number two. I think Once Upon a December is still my top just because I'm really intrigued by that magical market still. But the first 14 pages of this really intrigued me and I was instantly kind of invested in Colton and Gretchen's relationship. So number two, possibly followed by A Merry Little Meet Cute and In a Holidays because those still sound very light and fun and exactly what I'd be looking for this time of year. So as of now, this is definitely in the top. I would absolutely be willing to continue with this soon. I haven't yet chosen the next book. I'm just kind of choosing them randomly and reading them whenever I have a second. It is unbelievably hard for me to find 20 minutes to just sit down and read a chapter. I know you think that's ridiculous, but I'm typically an audiobook listener. I typically do not sit down and read physically exactly for this reason. And over the past several days since I finished part one of this vlog, I've had like zero time to just sit down and read a chapter of anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the next book tonight. And then as soon as I have an opportunity to read that chapter, I will come on here and give you another update. Hey y'all, I am finally back with the next Try a Chapter update. I say finally, like y'all know how many days it's been since my last update. It's only been a few seconds for you, but I know how many days it's been. I am failing at this Try a Chapter vlogging thing, y'all. I had every intention of like busting out all five chapters on a Sunday, but that is just not happening with all the filming and editing that I'm having to do right now on top of all of the other normal Sunday chores. And then I was like, okay, no problem. I'm gonna go ahead and read one chapter a day on my lunch break. And that is not happening either because I still have to edit on my lunch break if I plan to get one video edited and uploaded a day. But Bookmas is definitely making it very hard to keep up with life. So I don't think I'm going to be able to do three of these vlogs like I intended. I might be able to get the third one up after Christmas, but I don't think it's going to be able to be a part of Bookmas. So I'm going to have to figure out something else to go in that slot because I am failing. It's four or five days 
between when I'm able to actually sit down and read a chapter. But enough of that, what you're really here for is my update. I read the first chapter of Meet Me Under the Mistletoe by Jenny Bayless. And so what I'm able to gather from the first chapter of this is we're following Eleanor Noel. She goes by Nori for short. She runs a secondhand bookshop in London. And so in the very first chapter, you're introduced to her, you're introduced to the partner that she runs the bookshop with, and you're introduced to two of her best friends who went to this very prestigious private school that Nori was only able to attend via scholarship. So Nori has always felt somewhat disconnected from her friends because she doesn't have like the wealth and privilege that they do. But even still back at this private school, she and a lot of people were this very close bonded group of friends. And the two friends that you meet in here are really trying to convince Nori to go to this old castle where all of the gang is going to be meeting because two of their friends are getting married. And of course, Nori has been invited, but she's very hesitant to go. She doesn't want to go because the last time they were all together, the last time the whole gang saw each other was several years prior. I believe it was like five years prior. And that was when one of their friends actually passed away. And, you know, in combination with the grief and the reminiscing and probably the drinking, Nori ended up sleeping with one of the gang named Guy, not realizing that Guy was married with children already. And so she is humiliated. She feels very, very guilty about this. Everybody basically knows what happened. And she knows that if she was to go to this old castle and see everybody, she would probably be spending the whole time trying to avoid Guy and his wife. And she just doesn't want to be that uncomfortable. But by the end of the chapter, she is kind of acquiesced and she's going to go up to the castle and see everybody once again. And it's going to progress from there. I'm not really sure what's supposed to happen when she's there and she's seeing all of her old friends. I assume drama is going to unfold. I'm not sure how I feel about this first chapter just because I don't know whether it was me that was distracted that caused me to not love it or if it was actually the book itself. But being distracted is like my life. It's why I don't sit down and physically read anymore. And it's one of the reasons why I'm having such a hard time getting the chapters in for this vlog. So I was really distracted while I was reading this, I was like really quickly trying to get a chapter in while I was doing a foot soak before my bath before I had to go and do everything else on my list of things to do on Sundays. And so I don't necessarily think I absorbed as much of this as I thought. But on the other hand, I also don't think the writing was nearly as captivating or the subject matter as interesting as some of the other books. So I would definitely still place Once Upon a December at the top along with A Very Merry Bromance. I do still think A Merry Little Meet Cute and In a Holidays are the fun books that I would actually prefer to read over this. And Christmas by the book is probably ahead of this too because that does also feature a bookshop but the bookshop is going to be more of a focus in that book not in this one. I like the vibes and the atmosphere of that book. So so far I would actually put this pretty close to the bottom. It is definitely still above A Christmas Murder Game, but it's not really above anything else. So this didn't really blow me away, which makes me nervous because I have one other book by Joni Bayliss that I'm going to be trying at some point. So we'll see. I could just chalk this up to distraction. There was also a lot going on with work that I probably shouldn't be looking at on Sunday, but I was. And so my whole day has just been one large distraction but I did manage to get another chapter in. It didn't go the way that I wanted it to go, but we're going to see what happens with the next one. Hey y'all, I am back for the next update in my Try a Chapter Holiday Edition series. So I just finished the first chapter in The Christmas Sisters by Sarah Morgan, and I really enjoyed the first chapter of this, and I think I'm going to like the overall story because at its heart, it's about family. So this is definitely going to be some kind of family drama. The very first chapter follows Suzanne, and at the time this book opens, she is living in the Scottish Highlands with her husband Stuart and from what I'm gathering Suzanne experienced some type of trauma in her past because at the very start of this book she is waking up to a nightmare which wakes up Stuart and then that causes them to discuss the upcoming plans for Christmas and Suzanne is really excited because for the first time in a while her three daughters are all going to be together with her on Christmas. It doesn't say this in the first chapter but the synopsis makes it sound like these are adopted daughters. So I currently have no context in terms of what their backgrounds are, why they were adopted. Are these three biological siblings? Or are they all from different people? I have no idea what the relations between all of these women are. It sounds like the relationships might be a little bit strained. Suzanne is very excited for their visit, but she's also very anxious and stressed out about it as well. She feels a heavy need to kind of make everything perfect for them when they are there. So this is causing her a lot of anxiety, which isn't really helping anything. And apparently this time of year is kind of hard on all of them. But again, I don't know why. So this first chapter alluded to a lot, like a lot of trauma, a lot of damage. And I'm sure all of the answers to these questions will be revealed as this book goes on. So I am intrigued by this. Uh, this has definitely moved up to a very top slot on my list. I would say that this is now probably in the top three, if not the top. Just based on the vibe and the content, I think it's going to be heartwarming and touching. I think it's going to deal with some harder hitting subject matter. So I think it's going to have a little bit of everything that you might be looking for during the Christmas season. It also gives me some warm and cozy vibes because it is in the Scottish Highlands. There is snow. And I think Suzanne might actually run a lodge. That's what I'm gathering from what I read in the first chapter. And it sounds like Stuart is part of Search and Rescue. So there was definitely a lot 
revealed in the first chapter, but yet not a lot revealed in the first chapter. There is still a lot that I'm very curious to know. So I think I'm very comfortable putting this at the number one slot so far, followed by Once Upon a December and then A Very Merry Bromance. For some reason, A Very Merry Bromance really worked for me just after that first chapter, and I'm really intrigued to continue with it. But this is definitely going in the number one slot, followed by Once Upon a December and A Very Merry Bromance. So the goal is for me to do this for at least two more books in this vlog before I go ahead and edit and upload it. If I decide to do more, I will, but considering how hard it is for me to just get like one chapter in here and there, I doubt it, but I am very grateful that I liked the first chapter of this one so much. Very, very strong first chapter in my opinion. Hey y'all, so I am actually here in a doctor's office. I have an appointment to get my shoulder looked at because I tweaked it during CrossFit a couple of times and I just wanna make sure I didn't do like anything serious to it. But what better time to sit down and read a chapter of the next book? I started The Matzo Ball by Jean Meltzer and I really enjoyed the first chapter of this. So this follows our main character, Rachel, and she is Jewish. She comes from a very Jewish family. In fact, her father was a rabbi. So like they are deep in the Jewish faith, but Rachel actually has a pretty big secret. She is a writer. She writes under a pseudonym and she actually writes Christmas romances. She loves Christmas so much. She is in love with Christmas and she has never told anybody about it because of course she's just worried about like what will happen if her parents find out. She knows that her mother would disapprove and like she feels like it could come back on her father and so in this very first chapter you're just kind of meeting her. You're meeting her best friend Mickey. They're having discussions about her love of Christmas and what it would mean if that secret ever came out. I guess she's written like 20 Christmas novels. She's got four movie adaptations that were made based on her novels and so she's very successful and like I said she loves Christmas a lot and she's just kind of keeping this secret hidden. And her mom is always trying to set her up. So another focus of this chapter is a boy named Jacob Greenberg. And I guess when she was 12 years old, they were at the Jewish summer camp and Jacob was there and he was like this bad boy at 12 years old, such a rebel. And she fell really hard for him and he ended up breaking her heart because they were sharing a kiss and he pulled a prank and he had like all the boys from his cabin there with cameras and stuff like that. So she was really, really heartbroken by him. And you know, of course at 12, everything is, is very dramatic and painful and humiliating and so even though it's been like 18 years she's 30 at this point she still remembers this vividly and so when her mother tells her that Jacob Greenberg is going to be coming over for I think it's called Shabbat I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that I'm not really familiar with that she wants Rachel to come over for Shabbat so that she could meet Jacob Greenberg again and she is not having it. She does not want to see him again. And just hearing his name brings up all of these old memories. So that's really what this first chapter was. So you're meeting Rachel, you're hearing about her love of Christmas, you're meeting her best friend. I guess she's got this home office that is completely decked out in Christmas stuff. And then you're following her kind of like go down memory lane about Jacob. So I actually really enjoyed the first chapter of this. This is definitely one that I wouldn't mind continuing. I don't really know where I would put it in the rankings, but I would say definitely in the top 50% for sure definitely in the top. I really, really enjoyed this one. So that makes four for this vlog. I should have at least one more and then I will finally be done with this vlog. Hey y'all, I am just about getting ready to head home, but I did finish the final try a chapter for this vlog and I forgot to grab it from my backpack before doing this update. So I apologize. I will pop a picture up here for you, but I decided to read the first chapter of A Holly Jolly Diwali by Sonia Lolly is I think how you pronounce her last name. So not a whole lot is revealed in the first chapter. You definitely don't get a sense of what the whole book is about. The first chapter really doesn't give you a sense of what's to come, not really, but basically we're following our main character, Nikki, and she's in front of the TV on a Saturday night watching The Wedding Planner and suddenly her parents approach her and say, we need to talk, we're concerned about you, you know, you're 29 years old, it's Saturday, you're here on our couch, what are you doing with your life basically? And it kind of prompts a conversation about her dating life and that's really the entirety of the chapter. So you get to know a little bit about her, you get to know a little bit about her parents, they are of Punjabi heritage and so that culture is definitely playing a role in the conversation that they are having with their daughter. And so they're talking to her about this boy that they know that is single and they ask her if she wants them to set her up and she's like, okay, I'm going to be a good daughter and I'm going to say yes. And that's really how the chapter ended. So it was actually a pretty short chapter. I think it was less than nine pages. It was definitely one of the shortest chapters that I have read so far. So it didn't give me like the truest sense of what the book is going to be, but I actually really enjoyed that first chapter. This is one of the only ones, like aside from the Christmas sister and maybe one other one where I 
just managed to get sucked in by those first few pages where I was already really interested in the story and where it could possibly be going, which I really appreciated. So I think that really does put it in like the top 50% of all of the chapters that I've tried so far. If I had to give a final ranking, I would definitely say that The Christmas Sisters is number one. I kind of place The Matzo Ball, A Holly Jolly Diwali, and A Very Merry Bromance all kind of in the same category. They're kind of like tied for third place at this point. Second place, I would still say is Once Upon a December. I put fifth and sixth place a very merry meet cute and in a holidays those are just the fun ones those are just more befitting of my mood I feel really bad about putting Christmas by the book at number seven because I so enjoyed that first chapter I really did and I still think that it's giving off the correct vibes and I still think that it's really well written so I really enjoyed that so seventh place just doesn't seem fitting for it but it's fitting just based on my mood and what I kind of want to read so I think that's probably more accurate meet me under the mistletoe really didn't do anything for me in the first chapter so that would be coming in at number nine and then number ten is still the Christmas murder game. Like that first chapter just didn't do anything for me. I didn't necessarily love the writing style, didn't connect to it. It just left me more confused than anything with a lot of questions. So, so far I'm very happy with my try a chapter experience. I have started a lot of holiday related books that I think are going to be very, very strong because I do still have, I think at least five more books left. I am still going to attempt to do one more of these vlogs. I don't know if I'm going to manage it before Christmas, but maybe I will manage it before the start of the new year. I don't know. It's been a lot of fun. It's just so hard for me to have the time to sit down and just read one chapter. I'm serious, y'all. It really is. So this second vlog, I feel was more successful than the first one in that I really enjoyed four of the five first chapters. Four of the five just like really got me and I really found them engaging and I would absolutely love to continue with them. So this was definitely a success. So please be sure to comment down below if you have read any of the books that I talked about in this vlog. Let me know what your opinions are and if you agree with me on some of my thoughts and if you feel like I really should prioritize one over the others. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because I would sure love to see you in my next video. Bye guys. Bye.